Welcome again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters, G3OJV. Tiny HF antennas. Well, it's something that lots of us dream about. I got told of uh, one of these units the other day, the MFJ9232. We had a delivery in from MFJ and I saw this. I hadn't really noticed it before. Basically, it's an HF loop tuner. So this is not the antenna, this is the tuner. And it covers any frequency from 80 to 10 meters. <laughs> any frequency from 80 to 10 meters. Can you believe it? Well, <laughs> uh, there is a catch actually. The uh, wire length, that forms the loop that this tuner tunes determines the frequency range. Basically, you can get two, two bands on one length of wire. And the length of wire needed is covered in the uh, MFJ manual. Basically, um, it's about three quarters of a quarter wave. Three quarters of a quarter wave. So. In old money, um, on 20 metres, a quarter wave would be 16 foot and three quarters would be 12 foot. So a 12 foot loop, that's circumference, not diameter, don't panic. <laughs> a 12 foot circumference, in other words, a 12 foot length of wire formed into a loop, should tune 20 metres, um, 18, um, uh, sorry, 17 metres, and probably just about 15 meters so you might get three bands so <laughs> let's have a look at it can this mfj 9232 uh, help you have a tiny antenna on the hf bands using a loop i, I decided to test it out um, by putting together a very um uh, heath robinson uh, loop Fair, just to see whether it would work, and uh, well, it was it was an interesting exercise <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> well, the first the first thing I did was to um, make the uh, aluminium wire loop and put it on the table by the operating desk, run in ten watts and check in reverse beacon. I got several several European reports are about six dB above noise. Conditions on twenty meters weren't good at all. But I placed the loop in front of the window, but uh, this proved very disappointing. I think basically because of the RSJ and the leaded lights, but I'll talk about that a bit later in the video. Here you can see that I've moved the uh, loop once again. This time I'm down at the conservatory. The loop's in a horizontal position. It's a bit bent and misshapen, but I found that reshaping it made absolutely no difference at all to the performance. I was getting slightly better reports here than I was when I had the loop upstairs uh, in the operating uh, position. Finally I decided to try the loop outside in the garden and uh, I've used the tripod here to actually hold the tuner in place and then the loop itself um, I've hooked over some uh, shrubs which were bone dry so they were not have any effect on the tuning of the loop here were much more encouraging. There was a significant improvement in reports, as I suppose uh, you might expect. Uh, the current position there is the uh, antenna out on the uh, balcony here, and uh, so it's a sort of horizontal loop. And I've, I've found the aluminium wire to be quite uh, good because it's extremely light, and I think it's about you know, 12 gauge or something like that. Uh, the only problem is that it's very difficult to make it look neat. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> once it bends, it bends, and you could spend all day trying to straighten it out. Uh, so there is a downside. I suppose the other thing you could use would be a 12 volt uh, DC wire, the, the P 12 volt uh, plastic covered wire that um, you use to um, power rigs and so forth. That would be quite good actually, um, probably quite, uh, quite thick. Well, <laughs> I've come in from the uh, cold out there not only cold it's just started to rain but there we are it is winter anyway um so i've had a little play with this uh, mfj uh, unit now and 
it certainly does what it says on the uh, on the box. A couple of precautions, or one precaution anyway, is those um, screws there, those uh, terminals there are live. I mean, I so it's pretty obvious really, but they are live. Keep your fingers away. Uh, BNC connection, which really it had to be BNC um, because of the size of the box. Now, uh, I, I think I've proved to myself that it will work indoors. Um, but there's one or two precautions you need to make. First of all, I wouldn't want to run more than about 10 watts indoors unless I was well away from the unit. Now, the problem with that is that in order to adjust the unit, you've got to be near the unit. <laughs> Um, but of course you could run um, some low power into it, run uh, 2 or 3 watts just to uh, get the uh, uh, adjustment. Uh, by the way, adjusting, um, the only way to adjust this is to look at the VSWR. If your radio's got a built-in SWR meter, well that's fine. Um, but you will need some form of uh, SWR uh, meter. I, I try to use the built-in SWR meter on my radios because it does make the whole system more compact, particularly if you're, you're out portable. Um, the knobs are quite small, so the adjustment is quite critical, um, but that's a penalty that you have to pay if you want something uh, that small. Now, as regards indoors, I, I, I have proved to myself that the best place for this sort of antenna, loop antenna, is not right up against the window, because almost certainly uh, with few exceptions, the window's going to have an RSJ across it and that's going to detune it um, and it's uh, not going to be a particularly good idea to have a big chunk of metal right next to a high Q element. Precautions when you're... if you want to mount it on the wall, well, it's okay, but again, you need to know what's behind that wall. Now, as a general rule of thumb, if there's a main socket um, on the wall near the floor, they usually run the cable vertically. So, don't put the antenna on a wall where there's a mains uh, socket below it. Now there could be other cables going through the wall as well, who knows. Um, but that is one of the problems with mounting on a, on a wall, um, that you don't know what's behind the wall. <clears throat> All the time that I've used this sort of antenna, I've always tended to try and get it away from the window and away from the wall. Um, you seem to get the best, best results, and to some extent, I suppose it makes sense because the antenna, at least, is in, well, in free space, but it's it's uh, it's not a, it's not near any, um, any any metal work. So that's my rule of thumb: try and get, keep the antenna away from a wall. Um, don't put it right close up to the window, even though it seems logical. The chances are that you'll find you'll get better results uh, when you move it back from the window, and you can prove that for yourself uh, by just moving the antenna around. The other thing about using antennas indoors um, is noise. And really, truly, there's not much you can do about that. Um, there is a lot of noise in um, houses these days. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in a conservatory here, and you would think it would be quite quiet. Well, it is nice and quiet until you put the lights on. There are LED lights, and they kick up an awful lot of noise. Um, so uh, there's an example. Um, you've got computers, power supplies, this sort of thing, um, all sorts of uh, devices in, in the modern house that will create noise. Um, and as I say, there's not too much you can do about that. Generally speaking, moving the antenna around the room doesn't seem to make much difference because if there's noise in that room, it's all, all around the room. One of those things, I'm afraid. So that's the caveat with the, uh, with the uh, indoor antenna noise. Um, it's sometimes useful to get a, a little um, portal radio and wander around the house and uh, see if you can find out where the noise is coming from because usually there's, a, there's hot spots, but there we are. Anyway, coming back to the uh, MFJ unit here. Um, yeah, it works, uh, it works well. It does what it says on the tin. Um, it's great for an experimenter. And I think a lot of people will actually buy it to experiment with. But having said that, it does work. You'll have your own idea of how to install it with the, with the loop. Um, the examples I gave are <laughs> not the best by any manner of means, but it was uh, designed to test it out. And uh, there we are.
So as usual, thank you for watching this video channel. I hope that's been informative. And uh, if you find it um, useful, please remember to subscribe. And until the next time, enjoy your ham radio. Bye for now.